Okay, so I've set it up. I flipped it just to, to start painting it from a different angle. That made me realize that the eyes weren't quite, quite right. So I merged layers and warped it so it looked like this. And then I painted with more refined paint on top. Come on. Which makes a difference. All right. So we're just building layers and layers of paint. Now what I can also do, because it's digital, is with that merged paint layer, I can also play with the color knowing that I'm not going to lose what I had before because I have those as locked safe layers underneath. So I'm going to select that merge paint layer and I'm going to go to image adjustments. And you can do this at any time. And I'm going to play first, I think, with levels, right? Because especially if you're stealing all of your colors from reference, you might not be, you know, getting the most out of the contrast of them. So I'm just going to Look at the histogram, see that I can up my highlights a little bit without losing any information, right? Because if I go um, too far into the mountain of the histogram, that means I'm replacing subtle whites with solid whites. And I don't want to do that. I want to keep them subtle. Same thing with the, the shadows. I can push it right up to the edge of the mountain, but if I push it into the mountain of the histogram, that means things that were previously more subtle darks are now being replaced with solid black. But the so the safest place to mess with the levels is always in the midtones. Do I want it overall a little darker? Do I want it overall a little bit lighter, right? And that kind of depends on your painting taste. I tend to like I don't know. It depends if I want this Godzilla to seem dark and have bright highlights, or if I want it to seem like it's in daylight and have uh, kind of cooler shadows. So I just play around with it. You can also always limit your highlights if you're looking for more of a close contrast painting, which makes sense if you're putting it in a certain environment, but because we're just painting on a blank background, I would keep these pretty open. So that's levels, and let's see if that made a difference. It certainly did, right? Just sharpening everything a little bit. And that gives me better colors to choose from in the future. And then next I can play with the color adjustments. So my favorite color balance is very subtle, but I'm gonna push the highlights a little warmer, put a little bit of red in them. Put a little bit of yellow by dialing black the blue. Put a little bit more of that warm green there. And then in the shadows, I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to push the reds back. So it goes more cyan. Push the blues up. And then decide in the middle which way to go. Yeah, it looks like I'm going to be pushing down the greens. For the green slider. And then for the midtones, see if you have to correct anything that looks a little off. Like I want to add some blue overall to the midtones. And if you want to be really safe, you can do this on a separate layer, you know, make a duplicate. But let's see what that color balance did. From there, which is now looking very kind of overall yellow, to there, which is looking a little bit more like a mix of my two references and is getting a little bit more interesting to me, a little bit more full spectrum. The other thing I can do, <laughs> because it's digital, is I can dodge and burn. So if we're getting beyond just the paintbrush tool, and I'll get back to that very soon, 
but just to give me some good footing, I'm going to take a really soft edged, large brush. You remember this from compositing. Affect the midtones at an exposure of less than 30%. And I can just look at the reference and say, oh, you know, the neck should really be kind of burned down on the back. And then the shadow around the eyes. I have a lot of diversity there, but I'm just going to just burn down the midtones a little bit more. Maybe around the, the side of the muzzle here as well. Now, if your tools start to slow down, it's important to save. Sometimes you have to reload. Now, remember, this is a powerful tool, so we use it not at the very end of the process, but kind of in the middle, so we still have time to paint over it. But sometimes when we when we paint, we uh, are guilty of being a little timid with our color and value choices. And so dodging and burning helps kind of push them in one direction. Like I'm going kind of intentionally too dark, so then I can paint in some of the mid-tone highlights. And it'll get me closer to what I ultimately want. Now that's a big difference, all that different burning from what I had before. But especially on the neck, I think it helps a lot. And then of course you can use the dodge tool as well. I don't think I need that quite as much, but the same thing, I would use a soft, large brush. I could even use my custom brush, right? Because I saved that. But for each tool, you'd have to set new brush settings. So that's annoying. And working on the midtones, I can brighten up little spots that I think need it or where I burned it a little too much. Now I can be a little bit more deliberate and targeted. And so it's much like painting, except you're just modifying the pixels you've already put down. Now what dodging does is it actually desaturates the colors, makes the colors less intense. And what burning does is it saturates the colors and can make them more intense. So that also gives you a little bit more color variety, which can be nice to steal from as you paint. Okay, now I'm gonna lock that. That's that merged paint layer. Big difference from what I started with today. And now, continue with my refined painting on top. So I'll be staying with the brush tool for a while. Having all these different brush settings. And you just want it to be something you're comfortable with and you can be used predictably. It's also good to hit Command S every once in a while to save your work in case your computer is going to really slow down. And output it as a PSD every once in a while. Okay. Take my brush down to about 100 pixels. And now that I've made those big changes, actually maybe a little bit bigger. It's opacity down to around 40. And I'm gonna keep zoomed out and then just especially deal with some of the areas that I've been neglecting. You know, like the neck and the jaw. Stealing colors from myself, but overlaying them at this lower opacity. And it just builds up complexity. And when you get right down to it in painting, any type of painting, 
a better painting has been touched more by the artist. <laughs> you know, it takes kind of multiple strokes to get the effects. Whereas an amateurish painting, sometimes people are really proud of their paintings, their first kind of attempts at painting, but they've only ever like touched a brush to the paper once in any one area. They just pick the color and then put it down. And fine art painting like this, representational painting, a stylized painting, it's not like painting a, a wall. Even when you paint your house, you need to do kind of multiple coats. So just like for professional writers, there's the saying that that writing is rewriting. Well, for painting, it's it's often going back over, adding subtlety, killing the the darlings. You know, another phrase from creative writing, editing out the parts that are making everything else look bad because they're the more finished parts and then taking everything else to the same level of finish. Just lots and lots of repetition. So again, I implore you not to get hung up in little detailed areas, but to try to look at the whole of the image and keep restating it. Bring all the colors you've used into every part of the image as much as you can. So you don't have a red tongue that doesn't have any other colors in it. You know, you can put little hints of orange in there, even a little hint of the, the bluish green in the shadows. That will make everything seem more cohesive. Throw some crazy colors in there. This isn't as methodical as digital coloring, right? Where we just pick a flat color and put it down. We want to kind of search, try things out and find our way more organically. You might notice I'm not going back to my original palette all that much now because I can steal so many more interesting colors just from what I've already painted. So eventually your palette isn't as necessary once you've built up enough visual interest. Look for the areas that don't seem as worked over as others and you try to bring everything up to that same level. Now I chose a pretty um, small subject to paint, you know, just this Godzilla mask. And yet you're seeing in order to get that kind of texture and the visual interest and the variety, it means just really looking at all the aspects. And when an edge gets too soft, going back in and restating it. It's nice that I have these two references to look at. And of course, when edges remain too hard, blending over the edge of them and restating that. I'm still trying to use a brush that's just a little bit bigger than I'm comfortable with. That kind of forces the marks to blend. Forces it to look less digital. And by always stealing from myself, what looks like black is not actually black. It's all these subtle blues that are overlapping. And browns. So I really have to click a few times at only a 40% opacity to get that color not to just mix with what's behind it. Okay, I can turn my navigator on if I ever want to see the big picture as I'm zoomed in. And it can show me areas that need more attention. This part of the muzzle. 